Okay, let's exit from the droplet and we're back in our in our machine. Um, so because we have a user Jorge now, what I can do is I can SSH to that server. Instead of using root, I can use Jorge. And you're gonna enter the password that you entered earlier. So if you do that, it'll say, what's the password? I'm gonna type my password. And see, I'm logged in. You can tell who the user is because it's gonna say Jorge at Ubuntu, the, the domain, the, the server name. But see now, we're not root anymore, we are Jorge. And what that did also is, uh, if you remember PWD is the present working directory, now we have a home Jorge uh, directory within that server. <clears throat> now, the problem with this is that, first of all, I can still log in as root, right? And using the, the new password that I created. So see, I have, I have, I'm rooting there. And the other problem is that if you type passwords or if you have passwords as, um, as the authentication, it's kind of like, it's not super easy, but it's relatively easily for a hacker to somehow figure out that password from other services you use or something else, uh, even it's like sniffing and um, it'll be able to log into your server and do very nasty stuff. So we never, ever, ever, A, log into servers, cloud servers, or any server in, in the internet using a password, and two, we never, ever, ever log in as root. So we're gonna have, um, we're gonna change that by creating what's called a public private key authentication. Um, once again, on the Mac, it's kind of like it's already built in. It's 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 a it's a service um, called uh, OpenSSH. Um, uh, you can install this on Windows as well. I'm not gonna get into that, but look it up in Google how to have your you know SSH working um, for for Windows. Um, but let's generate uh, the the key pair, and you do that using a a command called SSH keygen. And what's, what that is gonna do is, it's gonna create a, a folder within your, uh, your username uh, called .ssh, and it's gonna save it um, with a name called IDRSA. You can put on another name if you want, um, but you know, typically I would have one, maximum two keys, like one for the, the company, one for my private, like personal stuff, but you know, I never use like many, many keys. So for now, you can just enter here. If you're gonna use um, a different one for company, etc., you need to like be able to load that key, and that's kind of like another another subject that I'm not gonna get into. So just press enter here, and um, I also encourage you to use a passphrase because this is different from the from the password that you used to to get into the server. This passphrase uh, is only good if you have a you know physical access to that file. So it's kind of like a, it's a two combo kind of like security option. So I always use a password um, unless this is gonna be a kind of like an automated, like, a, you know, user that is gonna like do uh, programmatically upload things to the server. That's also another kind of subject, but if it's gonna be the key that you use to log into your server and you're always gonna use it personally, then by all means, um, create a, a, a passkey. Um, now that generates this uh, cute little thing, it doesn't really um, like concern you. It's just like a representation of the, of the key. But now if you look at your SSH folder, you're gonna see that you're gonna have um, two keys. One is the public, this is the, the, the .p, .pub, and another one is the private, which is the this IDRSA. You never, ever, ever give this key to anyone, anywhere, no matter what, or store it in some other machine. Like you should always have it in your personal, like you know, your your laptop or um, you know your your the computer where you're going to be logging from. And this is the key that you can kind of like put in other services, like even GitHub or uh, other. Um, providers and of course we're gonna have to put this on our on our server and known host is basically the file um, that stores all those um, IPs of service that we've connected to remember how it said 
the first time we connected to our uh, droplet, you know, this is an unknown IP or whatever. So that's actually saved in there. Um, <clears throat> so now we need to put this public key into the server. And so the way we're going to do that is uh, the following. So remember the cat command? Um, so we're going to use that. So cat dot ssh id rsa dot pub. And you're going to get this one long string, right? So you're going to copy and paste that. And you're going to um, add that public key to the um, to to the to the server. So we need to like log in again, and uh, let me look at what that was. So I'm gonna log in as actually I'm gonna uh, log in as uh, Jorge because we should never you know use root again. Um, so there there I am. So the first thing you're gonna do is um, we're here in our home directory. We don't have an an SSH folder here, as you can see. So we're going to have to add um, a, a, an SSH folder. And the way you do that is you do uh, the following. Um, make dear dot SSH. Um, then you're going to, you have to change the, the mode of like write read um, for that, for that folder. And it's something that I don't. I'm not gonna get a lot into. This is like security-wise. This tells the 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 directory that only the owner can can read and write to it. And you can see the flags by using ls dash al. And you can see. Well, let's see the the folder. So SSH now has you know it's only read, write, and execute by the owner by by the user Jorge. Any other users don't have any access to that. <clears throat> then um, we're going to uh, basically add the um, that, that public key to the authorized keys uh, folder in there. And the way we do that is by using um, uh, a simple letter called VI and we do dot SSH authorized keys. And here you can put any, like a list of all the keys that you have, that you want to grant access to the user Jorge within this, this server. So um, just copy, we, because we copied it uh, before the, that public key, I have it on my, you know, on my clipboard. So I just copied it um, and I just pasted it. So then you exit by uh, doing uh, escape colon WQ. Um, and sorry, I did I first uh, when I when I started the the VI authorized keys. I press the key I to do to go into insert mode and then escape um, colon WQ for for us to um, to save the file. So press enter there. And the last thing we need to do is we need to change the again the the access mode of that of that file to 600. So you do dot SSH. Uh, authorized keys uh, six six hundred. Um, so now, if you if you look at dot um, ssh, you'll see that authorized keys is it, you, you can even execute. It's just read write for that for that file. Um, so now, this is the coolest thing. We'll exit, and you'll notice something when I do ssh um, Jorge at one fifty nine two zero three eighty two forty six. You're going to see that um, it'll prompt you for your password here in a uh, in a prompt. You can choose to remember the password. So you don't have to type it every time. Eh, I'd rather not do that, but you could like just log in with just one one key by by type by selecting this option. If you're like a little bit paranoid like I am, don't don't put it. But in any case, see, we didn't type the password in the terminal. It was kind of like it just checked the key. And you can see the actual all the steps that happen by doing the following. You can do SSH <clears throat> dash V, which is like um, kind of like uh, verbose, and you can see all the steps that happen. See, 
it kind of like uh, and this time it didn't prompt me the password because it, it keeps it on on a session for a little while but after a certain time it'll it'll ask you again but see kind of like it talks starts talking to the server and says hey um, it, this is a type IDRSA do you have that file no okay I have this one and then finally it, it gives you gives it the right um, the right uh, password or passkey basically or, or public key uh, that matches the private key that you have in your folder and that way you're you're not going to use in the, the password anymore um, so the last step is we're going to disable any user to be able to log in as root and also disable um, uh, logging in with passwords so that our server is like super secure 